of the Horn Alone piece, Prelude by Manny Rubin. When a composer writes for the muted horn, they want a particular sound, sort of mysterious, distant sound. Could be loud, but often is um, a more gentle sound. The good news is, when you see muted, you might see the word mute or with mute, or consordino, or avec sordine, or gedenkt in different languages. All those mean put the mute in. And you put the mute in low, full, and play exactly the notes for your notes that you see on the page. This particular mute, is fairly expensive unfortunately, comes with a string, which makes it very easy to have it hanging on my wrist with my hand in the bell and reach down and get it. You want a string that's not so long that you can't reach it, but that's not so short that it bumps against the bell as you're playing. So this won't avoid all new drops, but it can help if there's a string on the mute. Some mutes come with a little screw eye attached to them that you can put a, mute in, a string in. Others, you can, this stone line mute, you can simply poke a hole, thread a string through, leaving a pencil here so that as you knot it down here, you don't pull it all the way back through, and then pull that through. Or, here's what I like to use. You can take that stone line mute, take a nail, and start a little nail hole about in the middle of the back bottom there. Then take a screw eye, which you can get at any hardware store, and screw that in to give you a place to then put a strap, a string, a shoelace. In fact, this a mute that I was showing you how to put the screw eye in is mislabeled. It says that it's a French horn non-transposing straight mute, <clears throat> which is what the other two are. But in fact, this is a practice mute, and it has extra padding inside, has some little holes drilled, and it's designed to absorb more of the sound, so that if you're practicing while someone's sleeping, or in a hotel room, they won't hear very much. Whereas with a regular mute, it certainly is not as loud as the open horn, but considerably quieter, not as quiet as the practice mute. transposing straight mutes. Nowadays, these say on them, file corks if necessary. They used to say, file corks to desired tone color, the oldest version. Then they said, file corks as necessary. They now say, file corks if necessary. What that means is, this little strip of cork here helps to keep the mute from sliding back out. But it may not sit quite right in whatever bell size you have on the horn. So what you do is not to file the whole thing, but just to file the nose down a little bit. So I take an emery board and file the nose into a little more of an angle to get it well seated in the horn so that it's not going to fall out, so that it's covering sufficiently to make that nice sound. I also find that after a while, these corks get some tarnish on them and they don't stick so well. So if you take that same emery board and just rough up a little without taking off very much cork, you'll keep the mute from falling out of the horn. There is one more kind of mute, which I'll talk about in the next video, and that is the stopping mute. For that mute, you will have to play notes that are not what's on the page. So, on to the next.